In this video, we're going to use the values of secant u equaling negative 3 over 2 and the fact that tangent of u is greater than 0 to find the value of all six trig functions. And we're going to do it using trig identities. So let's review quickly what our trig identities are. So here are our fundamental trig identities. We have our reciprocal identities. We have our quotient identities. We have our Pythagorean identities. Now note that sometimes the Pythagorean identities can be used in radical form, such as the sine of u equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine squared of u, or the tangent of u equals plus or minus the square root of secant squared of u minus 1. So where the sine depends on the choice of u. We also have the co-function identities. as well as our even and odd identities. And so we're going to use these identities, or some of these identities, to help us to find all six trig functions. Now based off of the information that we have, that the secant of u equals negative 3 halves, and the tangent of u equals 0, that tells us that we're going to be in the third quadrant, because secant is negative and tangent is positive. And the only place the tangent can be positive is in the first and third quadrant. But in the first quadrant, everything is positive. So the fact that secant is negative tells us that we're in the third quadrant. So what do we know? Well, we happen to know that the cosine of u is the value of 1 over the secant of u. And so we're able to say that that is really 1 over negative 3 halves, which means that we really have a negative 2 thirds. So we're able to say, let's see, let's go ahead and let's write out, so we'll look for the sine of u and our cosine of u and our tangent of u and our cosecant of u, our secant of u, and our cotangent of u. So we already have our cosine, which is negative 2 thirds. And of course, we already know our secant as negative 3 halves. So from here, what else can we use? Well, you we can use our Pythagorean identity and say that if we have 1, or rather sine squared u, plus cosine squared u equals 1, because we know what cosine is. So if we subtract cosine squared u to both sides, that's going to tell us that we have the sine squared of u equal to 1 minus the cosine squared of u. Let's do that one in blue so we can see how it moved. And so we can find out the sine squared of u simply by plugging in what we know. So 1 minus our cosine squared. And we know that cosine is the negative 2 thirds, our negative 2 thirds. So doing some math, I see that I have the sine squared of u equals 1 plus 4 over 9. And if I put that into the calculator, that's going to tell me that I have the sine squared of u equal to 5 over 9. My mistake. That should not say plus. That should definitely say minus still because we had a minus right here. All right, and that's how we get the 5 over 9. Then from here, we're going to square root both sides, and we're going to get the sine squared of u equals a plus or minus radical 5 over 3. However, because we're in the third quadrant, sine is not positive. So we're going to take away the positive, and that's going to tell us that our sine is going to be a negative radical 5 over 3.
We're going to move on and do our cosecant of u next. So our cosecant of u, and that's our reciprocal of 1 over the sine of u. So we can say that our cosecant, let me try that again, our cosecant of u is going to be 1 over a negative radical 5 over 3, which means that we're going to have a negative 3 over radical 5. And we can't have a radical in the denominator, so by rationalizing that, that's going to give us a value of negative 3 radical 5 over 5. So that's going to be our cosecant of u. So negative 3 radical 5 over 5. So let's kind of keep track of what we're doing. So we found one here, here, and here. So now we need our tangent. So what do we know about tangent? Well, we know that the tangent of u, so it's going to be a new one right here, tangent of u, is the sine of u divided by the cosine of u. So what we can say is that we have the tangent of u equal to our negative radical 5 over 3 divided by, now notice that I'm not writing it as a fraction, and there's a reason for that, which will kind of come up in a minute. So we're going to divide that by, let me use a different color, sorry. So we're going to divide that by our cosine that we got as a negative 2 over 3. All right, negative 2 over 3. So to finish working this out, I need to keep change flip. So I can now say that the tangent of u is going to equal, I'm going to keep it, so negative radical 5 over 3, change it to multiplication, and then flip it to negative 3 over 2. Doing that allows us to cancel out those 3's and leaves us with a negative radical 5 over 2. Oh, no, nope, a positive because a negative times a negative is a positive. So we have a positive radical 5 over 2 is our tangent. Then finishing up, we have one more to find, which is our cotangent. We use our reciprocal property here because we know that the tangent of u, or rather let's do the cotangent because that's what we're trying to find. So our cotangent of u is the same as 1 over the tangent of u. So we can say that the cotangent of u equals 1 over radical 5 over 2, which becomes 2 over radical 5. And because we can't have a radical in the denominator, we will rationalize, which will give us a 2 radical 5 over 5. And now we have our cotangent. So now we have found all six trig functions. using just identities, and we're finished.